Good morning, everyone. It is about 8.30 in the morning, so it's pretty chilly out here, even for Florida, um, at least North Florida anyway. Um, I've got a lot to do to get done in the garden. It's kind of starting to become go time in preparation for spring. Um, I think I'm gonna try to aim to get a lot of my stuff in the ground in March, and that's technically like a month before our last frost date. So it's kind of a dicey decision to make, but last year I just don't feel like half of my tomatoes or anything really had enough time before it got just super hot. So I um, might try to get them in earlier if the temps at night look like they're gonna stay consistently above 50 so we'll we'll see how i feel about that but last year i got like five tomatoes which sucked so <laughs> i have been on like a i'm gonna have tomatoes this year kick so today i'm gonna be working in the garden and i'm gonna be um just basically my goal for today is getting all my compost laid out so that I don't have to worry about it later getting everything weeded. I may do some plant rearranging, um, draw up my plan of how I want my spring garden to look so that I can start thinking about stuff um, and where I'm going to start planting things. So that's my goal for today. So I just want to say that I kind of follow Charles Dowding's no-till method. So I try to disturb the soil as least as possible and I just layer compost on top when I feel like it's time. Um, I don't do too much in the form of amendment. Sometimes I'll put some crab meal um, mixed in with my compost when I'm doing that. So I'll probably do that as well. But so yeah, I'm just gonna be laying out compost, a layer of compost for the year. And anything that I'm cutting out is gonna be just straight cut out. I'm not gonna pull it out of the garden. So no till. Don't disturb your soil. So I had enough compost to add to just about every bed except for one. I'm missing one. I just use a mushroom compost. I really want to get into doing my own compost, but I haven't yet. So um, that's like really high up next on my list. So I am going to be um, doing that. So I use mushroom compost. It's not organic but I trust the company. And um, if you have a easily available organic compost, that's definitely better. But where I live, it's really hard to find organic compost that doesn't cost a freaking arm and a leg. So um, soil is honestly gonna be one of the most expensive things in your garden is getting good soil. So I really, really wanna get into making my own compost like a big hot compost, not just like a worm castings compost, which is really good too. But, um, so I would be really wary of using like a cow manure compost if you didn't know that for sure was like organic because at least mushroom compost from what I've read, it's like they can only use it once and they have to get rid of it and cow manure or something like that, unless you really knew what the animal was eating. I just, I don't know, because that would be going into your soil then too, and I would just be very, very weary of that. I honestly don't even like using a non-certified organic compost at all, but that's honestly all I could find. So I'm really gonna get into making my own compost very, very soon, because um, I just feel like that's very important. Um, so yeah. 
So everything's looking good. I'll show you around. Um, I'm about to plant some potatoes because it's January, which is potato time here. And some onions, which I'm like so late on for in the South. So yeah. <laughs> Everything is looking good. I'm pretty sure that bok choy is about to bolt. I got compost layered all around here because I'm gonna do tomatoes there and a bunch of flowers. Um, I got my broccoli cut out. I'm gonna put potatoes here. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna place a trellis here. Um, then I'm gonna do some tomatoes here. I'm gonna do a bunch of tomatoes because seriously, I didn't have hardly any tomatoes last year. And this year, I'm determined it's gonna be my tomato year. And tomatoes here, and then <clears throat> I've got some potatoes and down that end too, and then there's gonna be another trellis here. And eventually when all these carrots and beets come out of here, this is gonna be another pollinator garden. This is the only bed I didn't have enough compost to put on, so I'm gonna do that as well. This is pollinators and herbs which sometimes double as both, like echinacea. Isn't that beautiful? And the calendula's about to open up for the day. So pretty. So yeah, I'm thinking trellis between this bed, trellis between this front bed, <laughs> and then trellis between these. And then there's gonna be trellises and then back beds, long ways for tomatoes. And there's gonna be trellis all around here for tomatoes. So that's my plan. I may end up planting tomatoes on these side of the trellises if I don't have enough room for those others in the back, but I think I'll be fine with those. And then do a bunch of beans and cucumbers and melons, any of the other sort of squash, climbing sort of things, so I'm pretty excited.